Hello, welcome to EPG Part Sala. I am Dr. Sanjay Kumar Patel, Senior Resident at AIMS, uh, Department of Physiology, All India Institute of Med Medical Science, AIMS, New Delhi. So, under the uh, EPG Part Sala and under the subject Biophysics, this is paper number 03, Thermodynamics of Living System and Bioenergetics. I am going to tell about the module that is module 11 and title is Dithermy, Short Wave and Microwave and its use in surgery. So under the specific learning objectives, at the end of our, this module or the lecture, the students should be able to explain the importance of diathermy. The students should be able to describe in brief the various uses of diathermy. The student should be able to describe the various techniques of diathermy and at the end of this module, the, the student should be able to explain the principles of therapeutic diathermy and also the surgical diathermy. So, our this module will be described under the following headings, which is the overview of this module and the headings are first introduction, then we will be talking about a bit of history of diathermy. Then the uses of diathermy, under the uses, there are physical therapy and there are surgical diathermy. And under the heading physical therapy, we will be talking about ultrasound, the use of short wave diathermy and the microwave. Under the surgical use of diathermy, we will be talking about working the operation principles and the various effects of surgical diathermy under what effects it works and at the last we will summarize the whole module. So to introduce the topic that is diathermy, first of all what is diathermy? In a simple word it is the electrically induced heat and to define the diathermy it is the use of high frequency usually that frequency is in the range of 300 to 3000 kilohertz to induce the electromagnetic currents and it is in the form of physical or occupational therapy and in surgical procedures. So this is a brief introduction about diathermy. We have to give credit to Nagel Schmidt who discovered this technique way back in 1897. In 1897, this field was pioneered by the German physician Carl Franz Nagelsmith, he coined the term diathermy. The diathermy, the word diathermy is made from the Greek word, the pair of Greek word dia and thermo, which literally means heating through. So diathermy means heating through, if you talk literally. And the uh, most common use of this diathermy in today scenario is muscle relaxation and also this diathermy induces deep heating in tissues for therapeutic purposes. So to continue with the introduction, the diathermy waves are produced by basically three techniques. The first is ultrasound that is called ultrasound diathermy, short wave Radio frequency is in the range of 1 to 1000 megahertz. Those are called short wave diathermy. This microwave is typically in the range of 915 megahertz or 2.45 gigahertz. Bands, those are called microwave diathermy. Also, we have some methods which produce this diathermy. The methods mainly differ, differ from each other in their penetrating capability. The surgery diathermy is to use this diathermy to cauterize the blood vessels to prevent excessive bleeding. That is the most common use of surgical diathermy. And the technique is particularly valuable in neurosurgery and surgery of the eye particularly, the microsurgeries. So after briefly introducing the topic and before going into the detail of the topic, we should talk about the history of the evolution of the technique called diathermy. Way back in 3000 before Christ, 
it is recorded the Palaitthikta. So after briefly introducing the topic and before going into the details of the topic, we should know about the history of evolution of this technique. So to talk about the history, we should go to the 3000 before Christ when it is noted that the Egyptians used heat for the treatment of various tumors. So the, that was the very primitive use of diathermy you can say. In 460 to 370 before Christ, Hippocrates used heat for treatment of suprapubic abscesses. In AD 1, in year 1, Celsius used cautery for uh, hemostasis, tumor ablation as a cutting instrument. But the uh, present form of diathermy was first used in 1881 by William J. Morton, who applied the principle of electricity to the medical field. In 1891, Nikola Tesla, the famous uh, physician scientist, first noted the ability of high frequency currents to produce heat in the body and suggested its use in medicine. It, it, in 1897, the German physicist Karl Franz Nagelsmith demonstrated the therapeutic use of high frequency current in articular and circulatory diseases and coined the term diathermy. To continue with the history, in year 1900, Revere was the first to describe the destruction of small tumors with a high frequency current and healing of an ulcer with repeated application of low voltage current. In 1907, Doan introduced the electrocoagulation concept and he was the first to pioneer the bipolar diathermy concept. Until 1920s, noisy spark discharge Tesla coil machines were used. These were limited to frequencies of 0.1 to 2 MHz and these were called long wave diathermy. The current was applied directly to the body with contact electrodes, which could cause skin burns. In the 1920s, the development of vacuum tube machines allowed the frequencies to be increased to 10 to 300 megahertz called short wave diathermy. So, before 1920s, all the techniques those used diathermy were long wave diathermy. After 1920s, the short wave diathermy was introduced. In 1924, Weth used short wave method and he popularized the method of electrodissection, particularly in medical uses. Now, coming to the core topic of today's module, diathermy. So first we will talk about the various uses of diathermy. Broadly speaking, there are two uses of diathermy. One is physical therapy and another one is surgical diathermy. Physical therapy, it is the application of moderate heat by diathermy by either ultrasound or by short wave diathermy. The short wave diathermy again has two procedures and that are continuous short wave diathermy and pulsed short wave diathermy. Another technique of physical therapy is microwave. Coming to the surgical diathermy, that is the use of high frequency alternating current elect AC electric current and it has mainly two modalities, monopolar and bipolar that we will talk in detail later. Coming to the first use of diathermy, that is physical therapy and the first modality is the ultrasound. So first we will talk about the ultrasound. It utilizes the high frequency acoustic vibrations converted to heat. So the acoustic vibrations are converted to heat. This conversion is utilized by this technique. It is pretty useful in the delivery of the heat to selected musculatures and structures because there is a difference in the sensitivity of various fibers to the acoustic vibration. Some of these, these techniques are more absorptive and some are more reflective. For example, in subcutaneous fat, 
relatively little energy is converted into heat but in muscle tissues there is a much higher rate of conversion to heat so this ultrasound uses this variations among the tissues to cause its effect continuing with the ultrasound the therapeutic ultrasound apparatus generates a high frequency alternating current which is then converted into acoustic vibrations the apparatus is moved slowly across the surface of the part being treated as any other use of ultrasound and this ultrasound technique it's a very effective agent for the application of heat but it should be used only by therapist who is a skilled therapist who is fully aware of its potential hazards and the contradictions for its use coming to the second technique of physical therapy that is short wave diathermy used techniques of physi physical therapy this is the application of high frequency electromagnetic energy that is primarily used to generate heat in body tissues body is placed within the electrical field and thus the body becomes a part of this alternating current that is generated from the short wave diathermy unit the short wave diathermy is either a continuous mode or a pulsed mode the continuous mode is called continuous short wave diathermy and the pulsed is called pulsed short wave diathermy depending on the form of short wave diathermy one can elicit and thermal treatment or a non thermal treatment continuing with the physical therapy in the short wave diathermy method the short wave diathermy travels through the tissue generating heat so the heat is generated by the resistance of the passage of the energy through tissues the non thermal effects are elicited through repolarization of damaged cells and the correction of their dysfunction the depth of penetration of short wave diathermy is equal to or greater than ultrasound and greater than any infrared modalities so this penetrating power of short wave diathermy is used for the purpose of physical therapy the main effects of short wave diathermy are to increase deep tissue temperature at the short wave passes to the tissue it increases the temperature to provide vasodilation and increase the amount of blood flow to the affected areas this electric currents usually penetrate 3 cm deep the short wave diathermy is best modality to use if goal is to increase temperature so as we have talked the short wave diathermy is being used in the two forms one is short wave diathermy continuous short wave diathermy another one is pulsed short wave diathermy so first talking about the continuous short wave diathermy it is based on two techniques one is the capacitance technique and another one is the induction technique talking about first the capaci capacitance technique it creates a stronger electrical field rather than a magnetic field so capacitance technique creates stronger electrical field the organ is placed in between the electrodes and the organ itself becomes the part of the circuit thus the tissues that provide the most resistance inhibit the amount of heat transfer to the body so the most resistance tissue inhibit the heat transfer so areas of the body that have lower amounts of body fat so continuing with the continuous short wave diathermy we have the second technique that is called the induction technique this induction technique creates a strong magnetic field and a lesser electrical field as compared to the capacitance technique we have seen the capacitance technique creates a strong electric field and weak magnetic field but this induction technique creates a strong magnetic field and a lesser electrical field so it creates a basically the eddy currents with small circular fields which act within the tissues the eddy currents 
create the, uh, the small circular fields and this field act within the tissue that causes heat generation. In this induction technique method, the organ is not the part of the circuit as we have seen in the capacitance technique, but the organ is a part of a parallel circuit where the current will flow through the tissues that provide the least amount of resistance. In the capacitance technique we have seen, the tissues with higher resistance have a better role. Here the tissues having the lowest resistance have a better role. Now the second technique of this pulsed, uh, of this short wave diathermy is pulsed short wave diathermy or PSWD. It is the use of interrupted current instead of a continuous current. When continuous current is used, it is called continuous short wave diathermy. Here we are not using the continuous current, we are using the interrupted current. That's why it is called pulsed short wave diathermy. The interrupted current is sent out as a high frequency burst with short pulse duration. Thus, it provides the non-thermal effect with little to no sensory nerves stimulated. After discussing the various techniques of short wave di diathermy that are continuous short wave diathermy and pulse short wave diathermy, let's come to the most important topic or the most important part in short wave diathermy that is the indications of short wave diathermy. That means where this short wave diathermy can be used. Most commonly, this short wave diathermy is used in joint inflammation. This short wave diathermy is to be used with very cautiously because the deep heating, the deep heating produced by short wave diathermy can cause destruction of the, the tissues, particularly the collagen fibers. Apart from joint inflammation, we have some other indications like large areas that cannot be heated through. In those areas, we can use the short wave diathermy. Other methods cannot be used because of the size of the area. One more indication is the condition of fibrositis. That is the inflammation of fibers, the fibrous tissue. Inflammation of fibrous connective tissue that surrounds the muscle and causes pain and stiffness. So in these conditions, we can use short wave diathermy to relieve the symptoms. Talking about some more indications of short wave diathermy, myositis. What is myositis? It is the inflammation of muscle in the simple term. So inflammation of a voluntary muscle that is characterized by pain, tenderness and muscle spasm in the affected area. Since it is inflammation, all the cardinal features of inflammations are there. So myositis means inflammation in the voluntary muscle. We can use the short wave diathermy to relieve the symptoms of inflammation. The next indication is subacute and chronic inflammation or some uh, deep tissue layers. So apart from this myositis and fibrositis, we can use in some subacute and chronic inflammations also. Another use of this short wave diathermy is osteoarthritis. In fact, the most commonly used indication. What is osteoarthritis? It is the chronic degeneration of the cartilage of the joints. So since the, the cartilage of the joints are degenerated over a long period of time, it causes pain and the swelling around the joints. So to relieve the pain and swelling, we use this short wave diathermy. After talking about the indications where we can use this short wave diathermy, we must know the contraindications of short wave diathermy. Contraindications means those conditions in which we cannot use this technique, here it is short wave diathermy. So in the following conditions, we cannot use short wave diathermy. Ischemic areas, the first contraindication is the ischemic areas. It increases the metabolic rate causing more hypoxia. If we, if we use the short wave diathermy in ischemic areas, it increases the metabolic rate and that causes the more hypoxia to the tissues. In peripheral vascular disease, like Burgess disease also, we cannot use this short wave diathermy. 
if there are metal implants or permanent jewelry worn by the patient or the subject we cannot use the short wave diathermy so to use short wave diathermy one important precaution is to remove the jewelry whatever the patient is wearing if the jewelry is permanent or like some piercings and if the patient is having any implants in or in his or her body metal implants like in orthopedic in uh, knee knee implant and hip implants we cannot use this short wave diathermy another contraindication is perspiration and moist dressings if the patient is wearing some moist dressings we we should not use this short wave diathermy at it may cause the short circuiting in the conducting circuit also if the patient has any tendency to hem hemorrhage like if he or she he, he or she is suffering from any bleeding disorder then this short wave diathermy technique is best avoided in fact during menstruation also we should not use this short wave diathermy as the menstruation is a condition in which there is active bleeding and also there is a tendency to hemorrhage so we should not use the short wave diathermy in those patients in cancer patients also short wave diathermy it should not be used and in fever although fever is a feature of inflammation but if the fever is profound the short wave diathermy cannot be used it should be used only in case of pain and swelling there are some more contraindications adding to the previous list that i have talked sensory loss if the patient is suffering from sensory loss we should not use the short wave diathermy if the we have talked about the metal implants if the patient is having any metal implants the short wave diathermy is contraindicated also in the cardiac pacemakers have is being used by the patients the in some patients they use the pacemakers the artificial pacemakers in those patients also we should not use the short wave diathermy in pregnant ladies we should not use the short wave diathermy the short wave diathermy should not be used at the epiphyseal plates particularly in children as it is the growing end of the bone it may harm the growth of the bone also the short wave diathermy should not be used in the area of genitals also should not be used at the eyes or faces and and face the short wave diathermy should not be used directly at the site of infection if, if there is wound or any injury or infection to the uh, infectious site the short wave diathermy should not be used there and also if the patient is having any implant like intrauterine device if the abdomen with Im implanted iods we should not use the short wave diathermy in particularly in the abdominal area coming to the setup of the short wave diathermy what are the setups of short wave diathermy two condenser plates is used the two condenser plates usually placed on either side of the organ to be treated so the organ comes in between the two condenser plates another mode of the application is by induction coils that are flexible that can be molded to fit the part of the body under treatment either we should use the two fixed uh, two condenser plates or a molded induction coils as the high frequency waves travel through the body tissues between the condensers or the molded coils they are converted into heat so currents travels from one condenser plate to another condenser plate and through the tissues and while traveling through the tissues they generate and uh, the high frequency waves are converted to heat so continuing with the setup of short wave diathermy the degrees of heat and depth of penetration depend in the part on the absorptive and resistance properties of the tissues so more the resistance uh, and the absorptive power of the tissues more is the heat, heat that is generated short wave diathermy uh, operations use the bent frequencies of 13.56 or 27.12 or 40.68 megahertz so these three band frequencies are being used for the short wave diathermy 
most commercial machines operate at a frequency of 27.12 MHz with a wavelength of approximately 11 meters. The other two frequencies that are the 13.56 and 14.68 are now used for the research purposes. Coming to the third modality of physical therapy of diathermy that is microwave. What are the microwaves? These are the radio waves with high frequency and shorter wavelength than the short waves. So these are microwave because their wavelength are shorter than the short wave that we are talking about. The frequency being above 300 megahertz because these have the low, low wavelength, they have the high frequency and a wavelength of less than 1 meter. Most of the therapeutic effects of microwave therapy are attributed by the conversion of energy into heat and its distribution throughout the body tissue. Continuing with the microwave, this mode of physical therapy of using diathermy is generally considered to be the easiest to use, but they have a relatively poor depth of penetration. Microwaves cannot be used in high doses on edematous tissues as they are being used uh, as the short waves were being used over uh, over wet dressings or near metallic implants as like in the short waves in the body because of the danger of local burns like short waves these cannot be used on or near persons with implanted electric electronic cardiac pacemakers so more or less the contraindications are same in the short wave and microwave. So continuing with the microwave, some peculiarities of microwave we shall discuss. It induces the hyperthermia that raises the temperature of the deep tissues from 41 degree Celsius to 45 degree Celsius using electromagnetic power. This microwave diathermy, this mode of treatment at 434 and 915 megahertz can be very effective in the short term management of the musculoskeletal injuries. So it has a two frequencies 434 and 915 megahertz that is being used. Microthermy diathermy, the sorry, the microwave diathermy induced hyperthermia produced short term pain relief in established supraspinatus tendinopathy. So this supraspinatus tendinopathy is a commonly used indication for this microwave diathermy. This microwave diathermy is also used in the management of superficial tumors with conventional radiotherapy and chemotherapy. So along with the conventional radiotherapy and chemotherapy techniques, the superficial tumors can be managed by the microwave diathermy also. Hyperthermia that can that, that is produced by the microwave diathermy has been used in oncology in addition to radiotherapy in the management of different tumors. Coming to our second but most important use of this diathermy that is surgical diathermy. The surgical diathermy is also known as electrosurgery or occasionally as electrocautery. It involves the use of high frequency AC electric current in surgery as either a cutting modality or else to cauterize the small blood vessels to stop bleeding. So it has most, it has commonly two uses. One is the cutting modality, another one is the cauterization of the small blood vessels that cause the bleeding to stop the bleeding. This technique induces localized tissue burning and damage, the zone of which is controlled by the frequency and power of the device. The surgical diathermy that is being used, it is of two types, unipolar or we call it monopolar and bipolar. So as the name suggests, monopolar diathermy, it is the electric current when the electric current passes from one electrode 
near the tissue to be treated to other fixed electrode. That fixed electrode is commonly placed at some other places in the body. It is often called indifferent electrodes and it is placed elsewhere in the body. The second technique is bipolar. Both the electrodes that is being used in the bipolar diathermy are mounted on the same pen-like device called diathermy forcep that is held by the surgeon in his hand and the electric current passes only through the tissue being treated. Advantage of bipolar is it prevents the flow of current through other tissues of the body and focuses only on the tissue that is in contact with the cautery or the we call it diathermy forcep. This results in greater accuracy, safety and with the less tissue damage. This is useful in microsurgery and in patients with cardiac pacemakers also. As we have seen, the other forms of this diathermy are contraindicated in the patients having cardiac pacemaker. Unlike those, this monopolar and bipolar diathermy are not contraindicated. They are being commonly used in the patients having the cardiac pacemakers. This monopolar and bipolar diathermy are useful in performing delicate procedures involving neurosurgery, ophthalmic surgery, plastic surgery and some microsurgery also. But major drawback of bipolar diathermy is it has very low power which renders it useless for cutting purpose. So for cutting purpose the bipolar diathermy is not used. For cutting purpose most commonly the monopolar diathermy is used. But for any other purpose like the to establish the hemostasis or to, to stop the bleeding, the bipolar diathermy is used as the accuracy and safety are better in the bipolar diathermy as well as the tissue damage is less in the bipolar diathermy as compared to the monopolar diathermy. Here in this diagram, we can see this is the monopolar passage of diathermy current through the patient's body. The active electrode or the cautery is held with the patient, the surgeon's hand that is used for the purpose of diathermy and the reference or the indifferent electrodes is placed elsewhere in the body. So the with the help of this active electrode the current enters to the body and with the help of this in uh, from the indifferent electrode the current goes back to the diathermy machine. This setup is the use of bipolar diathermy. This shows the bipolar passage of diathermy current. The two poles or the two prongs are being showed in the figure. With one prong the current comes and with the other prong the current goes to the diathermy machine and the tissue with which we tend to stop the blood or we try to uh, establish hemostasis by occluding the bleeding arteries is being held with the help of this bipolar diathermy forcep. Now we will talk about the operative principles of the surgical diathermy. The surgical diathermy produces radio frequency of range 300 kilohertz to 3 megahertz. It is an alternating current and the patient's body forms the part of the electric circuit as in the other techniques of the diathermy. The active electrode is always small in contact area which leads to the concentration of heat in the immediate vicinity. It is always small, the pointed, the, the end is always pointed. The producing this surgical diathermy works by producing the desired effects and the desired effects are basically four effects. Those are coagulation, fulguration or that is called dissection it depend and depending on the intensity of current there are three techniques the three desired effects those are coagulation fulguration and dissection talking one by one first the effects of surgical diathermy talking one by one is first is the coagulation this coagulation is achieved by direct application of heat via an active electrode 
to the bleeding vessel causing coagulation of the blood proteins drying out the vessel wall cells and hence shrinkage and retraction of the vessel ends aided by the mechanism of thrombus formation the second effect of surgical diathermy is fulguration it is nothing but the destructive coagulation of the tissues with charring associated with sparks that create the spark sounds resulting from a higher intensity current passing through the tissue it causes extensive coagulation and necrosis of the tissue that is being that is in contact with the cautery this fulguration effect is used for coagulation as well as destroying small growths in the bladder or rectum the third and one of the important effects of surgical diathermy is dissection or cutting an electric arc is used to incise tissue and cauterize the divided surfaces at the same time smooth sine wave is passed through the tissue producing a very hot cutting arc and resulting in a bloodless field during surgery so these are the three effects on which surgical diathermy works coagulation fulguration and dissection or cutting for the purpose of coagulation and fulguration the bipolar diathermy is used and for the purpose of dissection or cutting the monopolar diathermy is used mostly after we have talking about the various uses of diathermy the various techniques of diathermy we have seen the uh, the use of diathermy in physical therapy we have seen the use of diathermy in surgical procedures let's summarize the today's module diathermy it is the electrically induced heat having high frequency that is in the range of 300 to 3000 kilohertz electromagnetic currents as a form of physical therapy and in the surgical procedures diathermy is commonly used for muscle relaxation to induce deep heating in tissues for therapeutic purposes in medicine and is also used in the physical therapy to deliver moderate heat directly to the pathologic lesions in the deeper tissues of the body diathermy is produced by three simple techniques ultrasound that is ultrasonic diathermy short wave radio frequencies in the range of 1 to 100 megahertz that is called short wave diathermy or microwaves typically in the 915 or 2.45 915 megahertz or 2.45 gigahertz bands that is called microwave diathermy the methods differing mainly in their penetrating capability in surgical diathermy it is used to produce basically three effects coagulation fulguration and dissection to cauterize the blood vessels to prevent excessive bleeding destroying all small growths and to incise tissue and to cauterize the divided surfaces res respectively thank you